My name is Mamoru Kimura, 25 years old. I came with my parents to my grandmother's house in the countryside. Mamoru, nice to see you. How are you, Grandma? I'm fine. Welcome, you guys. Long time no see. Hey, how are you? Yeah, I'm doing good. This is Yuri, my father's sister. She lives with her husband and my grandmother. She's basically an aunt to me, but she's 15 years older than my father, so she's always been like a big sister to me. Um, I know it's early, but I need to talk to you about something. Is that okay? Mm, what is it? Actually, I have a favor to ask of you guys, especially you, Mamoru. What is it? Anything you want, Yuri-san? You've been very kind to us, so we'll do whatever we can to help you, Yuri-san. Oh my, you're all so kind. Yuri-san says so, but I think she's the nicest person. When I was a kid, my mother got very sick and had to be hospitalized for a long time. At that time, Yuri-san, who was still single, came to our house and helped take care of her for about a year. Without Yuri-san, my father and I would have had a much harder time. On top of all that, all of us were greatly indebted to Yuri-san, who willingly took care of my grandmother, saying, I don't have any children. You guys all live in Tokyo, right? Do you live together? Mamoru rents an apartment right next to his office, so he doesn't have to be late if he oversleeps. I come home late and it's early, so I can't help it. Oh, Mamoru moved out of his parents' house, huh? Oh, but it's not that far away, and he comes back often. He doesn't have a girlfriend, so he doesn't have anywhere else to go. Mom, don't say embarrassing things! Is that right? You don't have a girlfriend! What, Yuri-san? Are you enjoying my lonely life somehow? Oh, no! Mamoru, your life is just beginning! So, what did you want to talk about? Oh, right, sorry. So, here's the thing. I was wondering if you could take care of my friend's daughter in Tokyo for a month. What? Her name is Yukime, a young lady from my main branch of the family. I think she was 21. Main branch? It may not ring a bell with you, Mamoru, but we are a branch of the family. And the main branch of the family, well, many of them are very rich. Is there a reason? Yukime's parents passed away when she was very young. So, the people around her took very good care of her, but... According to Yuri-san, when Yukimi-san's parents passed away, her grandparents and other relatives were very worried about her. In any case, they wanted to cheer Yukimi-san up, so they gave her a bunch of gifts. However, everyone felt satisfied from giving gifts and neglected communication with Yukimi-san, such as talking about how she really felt. I'm sure there was no shortage of material goods, but I think Yukimi-san was lonely all this time. Maybe what she wanted was not material things, but someone to be there for her. She only knows what people give her, so she's totally boxed in. She's so boxed in, she's like a Matryoshka doll. So, boxed in, she's like a Matryoshka doll? You mean that thing where no matter how many times you open it, the same girl with a blank expression comes out? I'm sure people around her didn't mean to hurt her, but all these years, Yukimasan couldn't tell anyone she was lonely. That's right. She's withdrawn and she doesn't have a chance to talk to people. And above all, she's very shy. Any friends at school? I don't think so. She went to school on days she had class, but never went to school festivals or other events. Her grandfather thought it might be a good idea to leave the countryside, where the local culture is strong, and go to the city to get a bit of simulation. He thought that a change of environment might give Yukimasan's a chance to change. I see. That's why you want us to take her in since we live in Tokyo. Yes, I recommended that Mamoru is in close in age, so I thought you could teach her what's trendy as well. But I wonder if such a boxed-in young lady can live in a commoner's house like ours. I was a little worried, but I decided to meet with you, Kimi-san. More matryoshka like than I imagined. No, she's a beauty. Miss Yukimi, this is Mamoru and his family. Um, I'm Mamoru Kimura. Nice to meet you. Uh, uh, um, 
Can I follow you home? She spoke! She spoke with a grown man! We will pay you as much as you want. Uh, please take care of our young lady. What? What? Is that big of a deal just because she talked to me? When Yuki-san was 20, she had a chance to go on a blind date with a guy. But it ended badly because she didn't say a word and kept intimidating him. Wait, is she a wolf from the wild? We will pay you as much as you want. Please! Please! Then we'll just take 20000 a month for food and necessities. Oh no, we can pay you more. It's not just about the money, right? Well, that's right. Uh, well then, uh, please take good care of Miss Yukimi. After that, the people from Yukimi-san's family packed up, and Yukimi-san was to go to Tokyo on the train with us. Yukimi-san, have you taken the train before? Um, if you like, we can hold hands. If not by hand, you can hold my clothes or something. If it can make you feel a bit safer. Mm, Yukimi-san doesn't speak. But I'm relieved that she wasn't completely against communication. Yokimi-san will be living at home with her parents, and I will be going to work from there for a while because my mother said it's better to have as many people as home as possible. Yukimi-san? I'm sorry, but could you go wake up Mamoru? He's going to be late for work. How do you wake him up? With this! <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> my mom taught her that, didn't she? Th thanks for waking me up! The first time Yukimi-san laughed was about a week after she came to her house. After arriving at her house, my parents continued to talk to Yukimi-san in a friendly manner. And this helped her gradually become more talkative. See? I bet you've never been to a supermarket this big before. I was so surprised too when I came to the city after I got married. It's amazing. Be careful not to get lost. It'll be hard to find... Uh... Hey, Dad! Don't scare you, Kimi-san! That's right! Yukimi-san, it's okay. They have a lot of interesting snacks. So let's buy lots of them and have a snack party today, okay? Snack? Party? I guess she likes snacks. Halfway through the month, Yukimi-san had become much more accustomed to her home. Have you played games before? No. Wanna try? Yes. And she replies to me compared to when she first came here, but she still doesn't speak up on her own. If she goes back to the countryside after a month like this, Yukimi-san will probably stop talking again. Hey, Mamoru. How are things going over there? Yeah, Yukimi-san started to talk a little bit, although it's only a short reply. That's still a big improvement for her, but you seemed worried about something. Yeah, I feel like I can do more for her, but her stay is almost over. I don't know what to do. You really care about Yukimi-san, don't you? Yeah. I think the best for her is to have someone who cares about her like that. I think you should be more confident and stay by her side like you are now. Yuri-san said that to me, but what I could do for her was very limited, which bothered me. And time passed without any major changes. Tomorrow is the day Yukimi-san goes home. The good days go by so fast, don't they? Yeah, I wish we could have taken you to more places. Um, Yukimi-san? I still want to stay here. <laughs> uh. <gasps> Yukimi-san is trying so hard to convey her feelings. Mom, Dad, if Yukimi wants, she should stay with us a little longer. Mamoru-san. She's finally starting to talk a little bit, isn't she? If she goes back to the countryside now, there's a chance she won't be able to talk again. I think Yukimi-san should practice more on her own pace. <laughs> you don't have to get so desperate, Mamoru. Yukimi can live with us if she wants to. That's right. It's fine if you're okay with it, Mamoru. What? What do you mean? Yukimi-san's trip to Tokyo was meant to be a blind date for you two as well. What? According to my mother, apparently Yokimi-san and I had met before. I had completely forgotten about it. But one time when I was back in the countryside, I helped a car that was stuck in a ditch. I heard that Yokimi-san was in that car. I didn't notice Yokimi-san in the back seat, but she seemed to have fallen in love with my bravery. After the arranged marriage failed, her grandfather, who was worried that Yukimi would never get married, 
decided I might fit the candidate and consulted Yuri. Yukimasan knew, right? What? Yuri-san was planning to do that from the beginning? I mean, you, you, you... I mean, Yukimi-san likes me? Why are you so flustered? You should be happy. You like Yukimi-san too, right? That's right. That's why you desperately appeal to us to let her stay here, right? I, I haven't even said I like her yet. And yet you take it this far? You... don't like me? Uh, I, I... I like you! Uh, how nice to be young. Uh, this isn't for show. And so, Yuki-san continues to live at my parents' house. And I live at home with her. It's like living with her while also living with my parents. I hope one day we can live with just the two of us, but right now Yukimi-san has a lot to learn from my mother, so we're doing this. After a year of living together, Yukimi-san started to smile a lot and laugh more. I feel like I can do anything for this smile. I hope that someday in the not-too-distant future, we can build a happy family together. Someone who wants their best for you. That is a very happy thing. At the same time, I think it's amazing. How did you guys enjoy today's story? Leave a comment below. Thanks for watching. Leave a thumbs up and subscribe for more. See you guys next time. Thank you for watching all the way to the end. Make sure to subscribe and click the bell for notifications.